Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be another Friday DIY. It's Friday of course, the second one in October. So that means it's going to be my second installment for my Friday DIYs. Basically throughout October I'm doing a different Halloween DIY on Friday. So be sure to be subscribed, come back on Fridays if you like the DIYs and yeah, I'm just going to get straight on into it. So starting off really simple, the first DIY is going to be of these little wooden acorns. If you've seen in my previous video, the other day I was showing you some um, little wooden acorns that I picked up in the range just a little bag of them and they were a pound and I thought it was an absolute steal just found them in the sales section I thought you know what I'm just gonna upcycle those somehow and yeah incorporate them in my decor so what I actually did was ended up painting these um acorns some of them I actually made up like this faux stain as you can see here I took a little bit of water added like a nice warm brown tone as well as some black acrylic paint just tiny tiny bits and really watered that down to make this stain and then um what I did was I just kind of like wet the acorn in certain parts where I wanted it to be darker and this was just like a faux stain it worked out brilliantly and it really gave the pieces extra kind of tones and depths and oh yeah I just loved it other acorns I painted them in a mixture of like sage greeny tones all the natural tones some whites and creams in there and yeah I just painted them and left them to dry overnight so all of the acorns actually have um overnight to dry I actually painted them last night just so that they would be ready in time for this video for me to show you them but I painted them in all different sagey kind of colors and and I obviously use like that faux stain effect and it turned out really nice. It still gives them a really natural like effect. As you can see there, it's definitely added some depth to them. It's definitely added a little like like kind of sprinkle of colour in there, even though it is very neutral still. And I think these are definitely gonna last like a really long time and they can be used for all different kind of deco themes I have in the future. I'm just going to use these as a little sprinkle in a little bowl I have over on the sideboard. So in amongst some other pumpkins and stuff I'm going to be DIYing and I also have like bought from Hobby Craft. I think these are going to look really really cute. I was going to add more details on them but I didn't want them to be too busy so really happy with those. So definitely keep an eye out for some wooden acorns. If you see them out and about in the sale they are a great little deco piece. So for this DIY I am going to be using this willow kind of wreath base this is one I actually got from a charity shop probably a couple of years ago now maybe last year maybe the year before I feel like last year didn't really count did it but 2019 I'm pretty sure I picked it up then it was really spooky it was really weird like it had these like crows and stuff on like this little scary kind of scarecrow that definitely like it was going to haunt me um I still got the scarecrow because I felt like it was going to come back if I threw it away um but yeah the base itself was really really nice I picked this up for 50p I do believe but look at this oh, such a chunky base like that there is like no giving this at all. So yeah, what I wanted to do with this was just to make it kind of into a neutral Halloween wreath. So I haven't used this for anything. Um, so I thought Halloween is gonna be the way forward. Love the natural kind of tones in this, ties in with a few things in here. So what I have also got for this is some little plush ghosts. These are also part of the DIY today and they were really, really simple to make. And I'm gonna be showing you like a tutorial on how to make these in the next, um, kind of DIY because I have made a little hanging one so I'm going to show you how to make that with and without the hanging loop and my tips and tricks and stuff on that so I've made three little plain ones and I've also made um two little fuzzy ones here and I'm obviously going to show you how to make the hanging one per match which also is how to make these but just without the loops so I wanted to make these so that I could incorporate the little hanging ghost and I might make a garden with these as well because I love them so much um and I've also brought in a little bit of faux eucalyptus because this is literally like a bit that I've had left over from another project and if you didn't know in this room I do have a lot of faux eucalyptus so I'm going to incorporate that. In order to separate this up it is actually wire based. This one here I came from a big 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 bunch from TK Maxx. I remember it being quite pricey maybe about £10 um, maybe for five but this is really like quite good like looking eucalyptus and by the time that I'd used bits and cut all these bits off it worked out no more expensive than like say buying it from like other cheaper stores because there was so much eucalyptus like actual like little fabric leaves and stuff on it and bits that yeah I feel like it probably saved me money so we got all these little branches now just from that one sprig and what I am going to do is just arrange the ghosts on here so I think I'm going to go with a little plain one at the top maybe and then how do I do it like that. I have only got two fuzzy ones simply because I want fuzzy ones in around my room in other places, you know? So I didn't want to do too many fuzzy ones. 
Yeah, maybe I'll do it like that. Could have them all facing the same way, but then one would be upside down. I don't really want that. So I think I'm going to place them actually quite symmetrical. I usually like to do things quite random, but yeah, this wreath is already a bit random. I've got dog hairs on here. <laughs> um, yeah, like that. <laughs> put the eucalyptus in around. Anyway, so I've made these with the little um, kind of bits of cotton through the back with the knots. So what I'm going to do is just glue them into place because I'm pretty certain that I'm going to want to keep these on here. Usually I would suggest like, you know, put a wire through it, sewing them on if just in case you want to take them off. Um, but I'm going to hot glue them because I want this and I want to keep it like this. So a couple pumps of hot glue on there. You should have it on its way so the glue gun i'm using is the gr15 by stanley always recommend this one because it has a hot setting and it also has a cool setting like a high and a low and then that way if you're like using polystyrene or something then it won't like melt the polystyrene but then you've also got it hot enough for gluing other bits so these ghosts i just made out of scrap fabric this one here the little fuzzy ones was made from I think this one here was made from it but like i got some pillowcases the other day and they came in a little bag and i made them out of the bag <laughs> that the pillowcases came in so that was awesome I was able to use that up and then these here were just scrap white fabric that i had just in my fabric box upstairs so gluing the ghosts on they're so cute and minimalistic i just love them <laughs> okay loving these ghosts next to put the eucalyptus in oh look at that that's so cute it's so cute and just like neutral as it is but i think just placing these in is just gonna give it an extra kind of touch so i'm gonna just cut these up a little bit and then just glue them why not because like i said i've glued the ghosts on there now anyway i'm just gonna bend them a little bit so they kind of curve around the edges like so i'm just gonna hot glue them into place because why not why not huh so what i want to do is only just put eucalyptus kind of like around the bottom make a little eucalyptusy like nest with these bits where i've kind of cut it off a little bit shorter i've nicked some of the leaves off so i could just stick them back on the little stalks and use that to kind of build out so i'm sticking like the bold end at the top in behind the um ghost i'll show you from this direction but glue stick it up there <laughs> up underneath the ghost and then i'm just gonna hot glue it down into place down here because then that way when i stick the next one on it'll cover that over and then let more fall from the front i'm almost out of eucalyptus so i'm just gonna make the most of this last kind of stem that i have for this piece here i think i'm gonna pop it in this little gap i don't know if you can see that i'm gonna pop it in to where did i say other one will remember oh this little gap here and then with some leaves there we're going to reshuffle them and then just yeah just pull some off and stick them in <laughs> and with like the odd leaf ones as i've put one there i've tried to like angle them so they look like they're sort of coming from the stems but even though they're not attached at all but i just think it just adds that bit of extra kind of texture in there just use them up why not save them from within <laughs> as you can see that i've got a bit of green there but i don't have it over this side so i'm just going to poke that so it's kind of poking in that's the problem when you make things actually like a bit symmetrical you can't just stop halfway through so because otherwise it will look a little bit lopsided but if you do things random and quite eclectic then you haven't usually got to worry about this but what is doing all over? that seems to be a what is happening and what is going on okay so clearing off any glue strings kind of little glue worms aren't they just get everywhere here is the wreath <gasps> oh i absolutely love it look at that so anyway now i'm going to show you how i made those little ghosts so stay tuned for that but look at the wreath <gasps> Oh, I love it. So for the third DIY, I just wanted to make a hanging version of that ghost. I have a little tutorial here for you, which I filmed last night. Oh, you know, really kind of uh, with it on this one. Um, but this is how it turned out. I absolutely love it. Are you ready? <sighs> it's so cute, so fuzzy and has this little hanging loop. So I did film the process of me making this one last night just so I had it really close up. And so you could actually see what I'm really doing. Um, if you want it, obviously, without the hanging loops, you can do so, which then are used on the wreath that you would have just seen but yeah look at this it's so weird and i'm so happy with it i think it's so simple but so effective and yeah i love it so let's get into the tutorial of i'm this little guy 
So I actually made this guy out of the bag that my pillowcases came from. I mentioned these pillowcases in a recent haul of mine as I mentioned the acorns. So if you want to see that there, be the linked down in the description. So what I did was just cut two pieces of this fabric and I made sure that the piles of the fabric were pointing the right way so that all the fabric kind of threads were pointing downwards as that made the most full light ghost. I actually had this template already cut out so I just kind of drew it around that but in order to make your own template you can just draw out on a piece of card and cut it to shape. So what I then did was I drew around on the wrong side of one of the fabrics so I had a light ghost kind of you know shape that I knew to use as a reference and I pinned the two pieces of fabric together inside that shape. So I did actually draw out a kind of inch gap for my reference when sewing. This is how much gap you want to leave when sewing all the way around. You can choose to sew by hand or by machine. I'm obviously going to be using the machine because I have my set up but if you don't have a machine you can do this by hand. If you want to make your ghost with um, a loop in, I would recommend taking one of the pins out so that you can pin into place like the string that you want to use as your loop. So you want to place this into, well, in between the two pieces of the fabric, like a little sandwich, and you want to make sure that the raw ends are kind of sticking out where you want that loop to be once it's turned the right size way around. And you want to pin either side of where you're going to be stitching, so over that ghost shape that you've drawn down. I like to make sure that the kind of far side of the loop is pointing out of that inch space so that I know I'm not going to stitch over it when I go over to my sewing machine. So once over to my sewing machine and everything's like pinned down in place and all secure, I then just start stitching. So I start stitching at the first kind of point on that little kind of inch gap that I marked out and then I kind of like double stitch on that so I back stitch to make sure that the stitch isn't going to come undone and then I just carry on stitching all the way around. As you can see here, once I get almost to the kind of other side of that inch gap that I want to leave, I make sure that the kind of loop of the twine is poking through or string or whatever you want to use is poking through that hoop so I don't stitch over it and it doesn't get, you know, caught in the shape of the ghost. So once I did that, I cut off all of the excess and stuff. You want to do this just to make sure that your ghost will turn nicely, kind of evenly inside out the right way around, as you can see here done nicely you want to poke through all of the holes and you want to make sure that the twine loop is also out so that you can hang your decoration to stuff mine i actually use scrap bits that i cut off the excess and then a tiny tiny bit of polyfill just to kind of like you know fatten it up at the end but i like to use the kind of off cuts of this fabric because not only does it make it more opaque you're also saving on wastage and stuff like that so you may as well just use it I then used a ladder stitch to stitch up my side. You could just use whatever stitch you have or whatever glue you may want to use. I would recommend stitching because stitching is going to last the test of time and to be honest it's just better quality so you don't have like hard bits in it but if you don't, not comfortable hand stitching you can obviously glue that. My top trick there is to actually just use like a tool or something to pull out any of the fuzzy fibres. I then attached two eyes using just like a needle and thread again and I used three millimeter glass kind of like circular beads as shown here. So I did the same thing on the plain cotton ones but in order to make these a little bit more quilted so I actually used these in the ghost wreath that I just seemed just a minute ago by the way but I just wanted to show you how I made the eyes like more like as a quilted effect rather than just on there. So if you just like sew through the eyes and just keep your needle on the front you will end up like having them look like they're kind of just placed on the front but if you sew through to the back pulling your thread nice and tight you will get a kind of a nice quilted effect like so. So I wanted to just talk about that too. So for the fourth and final DIY on today's video, I'm also going to be upcycling one of the little kind of box signs. I definitely mentioned this in my Decorate With Me video. If you haven't seen that, it'll be down in the description. But a few years ago now, I actually made a video on how I made a larger version of the sign. So I'm not going to go into how I made the actual box frame sign, but I am going to show you how I got the kind of stenciling onto the front. So I actually used my Cricut for this. So again, I have this bit all filmed. So yeah, we've got a really good tutorial in that. And we're going to come back and we're going to stencil that together. So yeah, if you want to see how I actually made the box frame, basically the tutorial is the same as what I filmed a couple of years ago so i'll leave that down in the description i already had this one made from that time i'm just upcycling it again so that i can use it for today's deck so instead of me making another one i do have that video to reference back so if you want to see how i made that then you can click that video down below it's just using some scrap wood and some strip wood that i found in b and q and yeah i'm just going to get straight into how i then upcycled the frame that i made those years ago 
So as you can see here, I'm measuring out the space where I wanted my design to go. Mine came up as 9cm by 9cm, so on the Cricut design space, I just made a like, box, kind of like, well, not a box, but like a square shape around about 8.5cm by 8.5cm. This here, I just used that so I had a bit of a reference to how big I wanted the text to be, how it was all going to fit together, and I just set out designing. So I used the font Georgia just from my computer kind of fonts, and then I just like set about writing October 31st. I played around with 31 number a little bit because I didn't like how it was first originally done and with the Cricut design space you are unable to like um like kind of un like lock those and then move them all around separately until you're happy so once i was happy with my design i just went ahead and removed that square shape then welded all of those bits together to make one like cut piece so that they would all cut out in that exact position so i went through and just like moved that over a little bit so that it was like you know away from the corner and then i clicked the um, base material as washi paper. I then added on a shipping label, just a regular shipping label that I use to ship out parcels and stuff so that it was sticky on one side and then I just cut that out, like I said, using the washi paper um, setting. I then just weeded out all of the kind of negative parts that I wanted to be stenciled, so the opposite basically if you're using it in vinyl, and I actually used washi tape to keep all the little bits like definitely down in place because obviously washi tape is a lot more low tack than the actual kind of sticker itself is so i used that just as an extra protection for those little parts i then just folded back the corner of the shop of the shipping label and then i just kind of pressed that down onto my sign where i wanted the stencils to be positioned i used the off cut piece of the backing there just to go in at the corner so that once i peel it and like the paint and stuff is wet the peeling is a lot easier like i said i added the washi tape there across that by the way this is my own washi tape my own design available on my etsy um i was able to peel that off once the kind of sticky label was stuck down just pressing it down before peeling so that all of the little insides of like the b's and the e's and everything were definitely placed in the right place where i want them to be so hopefully you can see on there that like the label and stuff is stuck on using like my little stencil so before i'm going to go and paint it i'm going to press on that just to make sure that there's going to be no air bubbles so that when we dab our paint on it's not going to go underneath or at least like limit the amount that will go under i don't want to press down too much on the edges because it's going to make it harder to remove later but just press down here now if you don't obviously have labels and stuff like kicking around then you can just use cardboard if you want to it might be a bit trickier with like the inside of the o's and stuff you can obviously just use vinyl but i just wanted to stencil it for today's video just to make it a little bit different so thought we'd just do it together i've got this paintbrush here it's a well-used one but it's quite um like stiff on the end and i also have this kind of like old tea towel which i end up doing this too <laughs> to try dry out my brushes and stuff so in order to kind of get it on that i'm just going to like stipple it with my paintbrush with this black acrylic now what you want to do is make sure that your paint is kind of as dry as possible so with a little bit just on your paintbrush there as you can see just a smaller amount i'm just going to kind of get my paintbrush kind of a little bit dried out just so it's on that we can build up on the sign so you just want to gonna go like that get the practice kind of arm going and then just take it away so it might be easier on the big three first but as little as paint as you can kind of get away with is going to be better because it's going to mean less bleeding through the paper less bleeding underneath well, less chances of it anyway so as you can see that i'm just kind of stippling away so a bit on my brush kind of dry wipe it and then just tapping away <laughs> and you just want to do that until it's all covered and then we can just remove the stencil now obviously if you don't have a cricket um you can just use a posca paint pen that's what i've used in the past i would probably recommend like a paint pen rather than like a sharpie or something because that might bleed into it this here um box frame is obviously um glazed not glazed and like stained on the outside with the strip wood and then we've painted the inside of it white and by we i mean me <laughs> and yeah that's going to create a nice little kind of contrasted background that's something i'd already done previous to me doing this diy today because like i said i did make this little framed little thing probably i don't know maybe even two years ago it was definitely in 2019 so maybe even like two and a half years ago it, it was a while um but i had it still i kept it 
I'm not going to upcycle that again and actually just use it. For these smaller letters, you just want to kind of take your time with them, make sure you cover every single little bit that you can. And like I said, little as paint as you possibly can do. And hopefully that will give you the better results, but we'll see how this turns out. As you can see, I've kind of like stippled all over it now. Like hopefully we've got no bleeding. There might be a little bit on the S because I got a bit carried away there and I went in at an angle, but we will see. So as I added this little tab, it's going to make it just a little bit easier for me to remove the label. You have two choices. You could either remove it once it's dry or remove it whilst it's still damp. I personally prefer to remove it whilst it's still damp because sometimes the label can dry and it can peel it off and I just find that you get a better peel when it's kind of just damp. I'll just bring it a bit closer so you can kind of have the grand reveal there so hopefully it's peeling okay. But yeah, you just want to remove it so that most of the stick is gone. Any of the little bits we need to weed out we will do with the Cricut kind of little angle tool there or just like a needle if you don't have one of those, a little pin. If obviously you want a stencil and you want to do it stenciled like I have here, then Etsy usually have a great selection. Try eBay maybe. Those are all places that I bought stencils before I had a Cricut. Um, but with a Cricut, obviously, you can make unlimited amount of stencils. So whatever you want and whatever design you want it to. And obviously, we were able then to have the freedom to change the one where I wanted that to be changed. So look at this. Oh, it's stenciled really, really nicely. Can't believe that, actually. This is probably my best stencil yet. <laughs> oh, we got a bit of bleed in there, but hardly anything, just on the one. Oh, look at that. So I'm gonna just leave this to dry before I peel off those little innards. And once all that's done, the little sign is complete. So this is what all of the pieces are looking like together now. I've got the wreath up on the um, mirror, I was gonna say window. I've actually put the little hanging ghost on this little cotton stem there. I've got the October 31st sign on there. I think it works really well, cause especially cause I got the trick or treat one over there, which I made a few years ago and the acorns are over in the bowl. I do want to put some more like white pumpkins in there. That's gonna be in the next DIY that I do. Cause I do want to share a tutorial that I have on that using something that would otherwise go in the bin. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna make some little white ones in there to balance the colors out there, but really, really happy with how it's all looking. Look it's all tied together really nicely i'm loving that and that is the end of today's video i hope you have enjoyed it thank you so much for joining me today on today's diy video let me know which one of the four was your favorite whether it was a wreath the acorns um the little hanging ghost or it was the sign all were very simple and of like items I already had so I don't expect everyone to have all of these um items but hopefully they've sparked a little bit of inspiration a little bit of creativity in you and you're going to get crafting if you do then please do be sure to tag me on instagram I would love to see your makes I'd love to just get chatting to you about DIYs and stuff because if you didn't already know I do really really like talking and some people have mentioned it once or twice here but here we are I just love a chat so anyway thank you so much for joining me and I will see you very soon for another video I also really don't know why I wave. Like, I feel like I wave every time I come on and every time I leave. I think it's just habit from doing it from my, like, older channel, my Chelsea DIY kind of kawaii, cute, squishy kind of toys. <laughs> you videos I used to do. I can't stop waving, so hi, bye. Sorry I wave so much. A bit weird, isn't it? I'm, like, I'm just a waver, apparently. Like, hiya. I do that out in the street as well. If I see someone, I'm like, hi. Yeah, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'll wait <waved> again. <laughs>